Hello everyone and welcome back for another Paranormal Pit Stop. If you've watched our last few uploads, you probably know what we're going to say next. After a ridiculous number of requests, the Speakeasy will be moving forward with a new on-site series that we've dubbed Sleepovers, which will entail one of our hosts exploring some of the most chillingly haunted locales for a truly authentic and unique experience. In the meantime, share our channel with anyone and everyone you know so Sleepovers gets the welcome it deserves. Tonight, we'll be exploring a popular historic townscape containing the city of Nauvoo, Illinois, alongside a number of popular landmarks that, while nearly entirely based around Nauvoo during its time of incorporation in 1840, also plays host to the Pioneer Saint Cemetery, which totes itself as the oldest Mormon cemetery in the region, though technically resting just outside city limits. Rumored to hold the ghosts of the many who once resided on site so long ago, are you ready to brave the history and hauntings of the Nauvoo Historic District. Historically, lands that would one day hold Nauvoo were initially named Quashquima by those native to the region, after a great chief who led a Sauk and Fox settlement boasting around 500 lodges. Circa 1827, however, American settlers had arrived to construct some of the first modern cabins in the area. By 1829, the populace of what was then called Hancock County had grown to a point that it required a post office, and in 1832, a town which was at that point called Venus actually held a torch in the the race for county seat, though it was eventually beaten out by Carthage. In 1834, Venus's name would be changed to Commerce, as it was felt this moniker better conveyed the community's plans for its future. In 1839, the town was purchased under the Latter-day Saints, and in April of 1840, leader of the Latter-day Saints, Joseph Smith, would rename the community as Nauvoo, and would usher the rest of his followers there to escape conflict with the government in Missouri. By 1844, the once sleepy community's population had risen to 12,000 rivaling Chicago's very own at the time. Though following Smith's death later the same year, and continued resistance from non-affiliated locals, many associated with the Latter-day Saints were forced to move, most following Brigham Young to the Great Salt Lake Valley. In 1849, a grouping of Acarians moved to Nauvoo and would establish a utopian socialist commune that followed the teachings of French philosopher Etienne Cabet. While at first this community would flourish, reaching 500 members rapidly, following Cabet's death in 1856, many of its members dispersed, and by the mid-20th century, Nauvoo had been transformed into a primarily Catholic township with Christian and Methodist elements. Through the 1960s, interested Mormon parties would initiate efforts to restore and preserve the expansion as a tourist destination, offering insight into the history of Mormonism. In 1961, the entirety of the district was declared a National Historic Landmark, and more recently, in June of 2002, the LDS Church would construct a new temple locally over the site of the former temple, which burned in a fire in 1848 and was subsequently leveled by a tornado in 1865. In the present, the Nauvoo Historic District remains open, offering 1,100 acres of restored homes, shops, and the like including the abode of Brigham Young and a fully equipped visitor center. Chillingly, the whole of Nauvoo is rumored to harbor the souls of those who lived there and lives since past, as well as the restless spirits of all those who arrived to Nauvoo believing it a safe haven, only to be chased out once more. And both officials and visitors to the district have reported extreme cold spots felt in the heat of summer, instant battery death in electronics, and disembodied footsteps and voices heard from vacant spaces. Several informal investigations of Nauvoo have yielded high EMF levels, disturbing EVPs, and orbs and strange mists that are captured in photography, while others have told of encounters with both menacing shadowy figures and full-bodied entities in clothing spanning the eras. One more popular story that is indeed factual surrounds the May 1842 assassination attempt on Missouri Governor Lillard Boggs, which resulted in his injury by gunshot wound and spurred rumors that Joseph Smith's bodyguard, Porter Rockwell, was the shooter. By 1844, Smith and his associates were in conflict, and on June 23rd of the same year, he and his brother Hiram would ride to Carthage to stand trial for inciting a riot. Once the Smiths were in custody, however, the law pulled a fast one, elevating their charges to treason, preventing bail, and effectively killing off any chances the Smiths had at breathing free air again. On June 27th, an armed mob with blackened faces breached Carthage jail, shooting Hiram in the face as he attempted to barricade the door. Joseph would fire 
three shots from a pepper box pistol, wounding several men, after which it's told he sprang from the window, where he was shot countless times before impacting the ground below, where it's documented his lifeless form was shot a number more times by the encroaching mob before their dispersion. While five men were tried for Smith's slaying, all were promptly acquitted. Predating this incident in 1841, Joseph Smith had started construction on what he called the Nauvoo House, which was purportedly intended as a boarding house, but was never fully completed and was instead transformed into the Riverside Mansion. Following the deaths of the Smiths, the brothers' bodies were buried secretly at Riverside in the cellar to prevent them from being stolen or desecrated, and later their remains were moved closer to the homestead in the Smith Family Cemetery. Not really all that surprising considering their send-off and treatment following, many legends and accounts tell of encounters with the entities of Joseph and Hiram Smith, most often near the cemetery, and a handful of accounts paint Joseph as looking content, some say with the way in which the community has grown. Also preceding Joseph's death, his widow Emma would remain in the Nauvoo house, and through the 1870s, her second husband, Louis Bitterman, would complete the home, refurbish it, and remove the Book of Mormon from its cornerstone. It said this act further disturbed Joseph's presence, and to date, within the old structure, many have told of doors opening and slamming shut violently, of heavy, disembodied boot steps, and of the constant feeling of being watched in an unwelcome manner by someone unseen. Thanks for joining us on this Paranormal Pit Stop. If you enjoyed our histories and ghost stories, subscribe to our channel, like this upload, and as mentioned prior, share us with everyone you know to help better welcome our upcoming series, Sleepovers, Pleasant Dreams.